Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. In the past, we went over the if test, which looked basically like this. It said, we're going to perform a test. If that test comes out true, then we perform all the commands in between the then section and the phi section. If this test is false, then skip over these commands, and we continue down to here. Today we're going to look at the while loop, which is very similar to the if test. Here's the way it works. We run a test. If this test is false, then we skip over everything from the do, the commands, and the done, and we go down and start running our program from after where the done would be. However, if the test is true, then we go inside of the do to done portion and execute those commands. Now here's the catch. After we're done executing those commands, we go back up to the top and we rerun this test. If the test comes out true, then we go back in and rerun those commands. And we keep on doing that until this test comes out false. So, what you're going to want to do is somehow, in these commands right here, you want to eventually provide it an option so that this test will someday somehow come out false because if you don't you get stuck in a permanent infinite loop which can eat up your CPU so once again a while loop will perform a test and if the test is true run the commands inside of do to done and after it's done executing those commands it will go back up to the test, rerun the test. If the test is still true, it will go back in and rerun those commands, and then go back up and rerun the test. And it will continue that pattern until this test comes out false. Afterward, it will go down to afterward done. To summarize, the while loop runs a test. If the test is true, then the code inside of do to done is repeatedly executed until the test is false. Otherwise, it just skips over that stuff. All of those commands between the do to the done. Let's take a look at two examples. So, what we start out with is we're going to assign a value of zero to the variable n. And then we're going to do this test right here. And by the way, you can do a mathematical test, a string test, or a file test. Those are all perfectly OK with inside of this while test condition. So we're going to ask, is n less than 6? If it's less than 6, then we go from the do to the done section. What's that? Well, what we do here is some math and we're just going to multiply n by itself and by itself again. We're going to cube it and then we're just going to print out what it is cubed. Afterward, we're going to increment n by 1. n equals n plus 1 and as you remember the double parentheses mean mathematical operations. Once again, if you don't adjust this variable right here, it's always going to be 0, and 0 is always going to be less than 6, and therefore this test will be an infinite loop, and you will never get outside of the while loop here. So you want to change n inside of the do to done portion. Let's run that. Let's see what it looks like. So here's our program. So first time through, n was 0, and it cubed it to 0, n was 1, it cubed it to 1, n was 2, it cubed it to 8, so forth and so on. Let's just review the code. As you can see, As long as n was less than 6, we stayed within this loop, and 
as you can see the last time n was 5 and when n was 5 we did this we printed n cubed is 125 then we incremented n to be 6 right here and we went back up here and we said n is not less than 6 therefore we escape out of this while loop and we start execution from the code right here so the second example I wanted to look at was this we're going to use a while loop to actually monitor a condition on the system in the first example we just did an increment of a number and you can use while loops for that type of stuff it's perfectly groovy however you can also use while loops to monitor your system and that's what we're doing right here we have while and this is a file test as you might remember from the last lesson we have double square brackets we're checking to see if this file right here temp slash temp slash a dot text is any type of file in other words does this file exist if it exists then we go down within the due to the done and we execute the code between the two of them well that is a sleep 2 and what that is the sleep command it's a unix level command that just says pause for two seconds sleep for two seconds and then we go back up and we check to see if the file exists again and we keep on doing this as long as the file exists once the file no longer exists we go down to below where the done is and we start executing the code from there and what does that say it just says that the file a.txt is gone so let's take a look at the program as it's running so we did our cubing right here and now as you can see the cursor is just waiting there it's doing the test it's sleeping for two seconds and doing the test again I'm going to remove the file and as you can see it comes back and says slash temp slash a dot text is gone so that is just one example of how you can use a while statement to monitor your system you might want to do something like to see if a DF command returns that a certain file system is bigger than 85 percent as long as the file system is below 85 percent we might sleep for 10 seconds and then go back and check it again and once it is above 85 percent we'd break out and we'd print a message or send an email to ourselves that says hey this file system is being used too much it doesn't have enough free space you might want to look into it